Okay. A short time ago, I spoke to the families of Matt Field and Kate Ledbetter to let them know that I have signed a notice of appeal. Uh, that appeal will be lodged by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions this afternoon. Now, as you all know, there is now not much more I can say as the matter is before the Court of Appeal. But I can confirm that the grounds of appeal are that the sentence of manslaughter was manifestly inadequate, particularly as the judge had determined that the offence was a heinous offence. I do again want to pay tribute to the families of Matt and Kate and acknowledge what they have been through and the community's frustration and anger about this case. I have listened, I have taken the advice from the Director of Public Prosecutions and now I am appealing this matter. I'm happy to take questions. Why is it So I requested urgent advice from the Director of Public Prosecutions. They have to get a court transcript, they have to work through the arguments, they have to present me with full and frank advice. An appeal would not be due to be lodged until the 7th of July. I received the advice from the Director of Public Prosecutions this morning and I have filed a notice to appeal today. So again, as you know, there's not much more I can say, but I can confirm that the grounds on which the appeal is being made is that the sentence for manslaughter was manifestly inadequate, particularly as the judge determined that the offence was a heinous offence, uh, which meant uh, that the sentence could have been more than 10 years under the Youth Justice Act. Again, there is not much more I can say as the matter is now before the Court of Appeal, but I again want to acknowledge what the family and the community have been through the tragic death of Matt and Kate and their unborn child in such horrific circumstances um, has really been felt far and wide in the Queensland community. Uh, and again, I have listened, I have received that advice, and today I have appealed the matter. I guess my message to the community, and I know that there's been many thousands of Queenslanders that have signed a petition, is since this case. We have made significant changes to the Youth Justice Act, significant changes since this awful tragedy, which means that we have reversed the presumption of bail for young offenders. If a young offender commits a serious offence now in Queensland, they are presumed not to get bail. And I want to be very clear with you, those reforms are working. More young people committing serious offences are not getting bail. They are in detention because community safety is our primary concern. So we have made those changes since this horrific tragedy and they are working. Unlike the opposition, I didn't stand up on day one and say we would appeal this matter. It is so important that we follow the proper process, that I get advice from the Director of Public Prosecutions. I have listened to the community, but I have also taken advice, and I have determined that the matter warrants an appeal. And when did you seek that advice? I sought that advice on the day the matter was handed down, and I received that advice this morning. Oh, look, I, I absolutely appreciate just how emotional this particular case was. We have lost the lives of two you know, young Queenslanders and their unborn baby. I completely understand the community's anger and frustration. But I guess I want to remind the community that, that this case actually prompted huge changes to our Youth Justice Act. The Youth Justice Minister has made significant changes to the Youth Justice Act and, and those changes are working. And look, I know that the LNP are calling for a return to the offensive breach of bail, but I want to be very clear with all of you and Queenslanders. That offence did not work when it was in place. 185 young people were charged with breach of bail and found guilty. They received no additional penalties. It was not a disincentive. Uh, it did not stop young people reoffending. 90% of young people who were guilty of breach of bail went on to commit an offence within 12 months. What will keep 
the community safe is making sure that young people who commit serious offences stay in detention. They get the services they need, but more importantly, we keep the community safe by reversing the presumption of bail. No, the matter, as I said, um, I've filed a notice. The appeal will be lodged this afternoon uh, and then it will be heard by the Court of Appeal. 50,000 signatures on that. Uh, <coughs> in your view, is it all about this case or do you think there's wider community anger about the actual oh, federal issue? Look, I think, I do think people are worried about, you know, um, you know, property theft, and young people, but, you know, it is a complex issue. We have made significant changes. Um, and as the Premier and I and the Minister for Youth Justice have said, we're prepared to look at any solutions that will keep the community safe and that will hold young people to account. We also are investing many millions of dollars into domestic and family violence services. So many of these young people are exposed to domestic violence, drug and alcohol, mental health. You know, we will see significant investments in the budget next week to support these vulnerable families so that we can try and attempt to stop any of these crimes happening. But once they do, I completely understand the priority is community safety and holding young people to account. And that's the changes that we have made to the Youth Justice Act. Look, they didn't. They, of course, you know, were incredibly emotional at the news that the matter would be appealed. Um, and, you know, I, I offered to them if they had anything more that they would like to say to me at any time, they can, of course, get in touch with us. Um, of course, I offered my sympathies. I reminded them of some of the changes that have happened since this case. But, of course, nothing is going to bring back Matt or Kate. And that is, I think, at the heart of, of why the community really have felt this so emotionally and are, and are angry and frustrated. And I want to say that I acknowledge that and I have listened to that. Clearly the community have told us that this does not reflect community attitudes and that is part of why today we have lodged an appeal. Uh, so as we did with the first report, we'll try and release that as soon as possible. Um, so, you know, I'll meet with um, uh, Margaret McMurdo next week to receive the report and we'll try and release that as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, so as I've said, we will be releasing the terms of reference and announcing the reviewer next week. I'm not sure the exact day, but it will be next week. Thank you, everyone.